Welcome to the uh, economic development webinar for the Valley with opportunities uh, for PACE. We're excited to visit with you today. We'll give it just a minute uh, to let folks uh, join the meeting. My name is Charlene Heidinger. I am the president of the Texas PACE Authority and I'm joined today by Rick Carrera, who is a director of economic development for the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. The Development Council uh, administers the PACE program for all businesses and nonprofits in Cameron County, Hidalgo County, and Willacy County. And we're here to tell you about this great program today. While we're uh, waiting for folks to join us, I would invite you to ask any questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We'll monitor those during the uh, during the webinar and we'll get to questions at the end. Uh, and we look forward to that. So dialogue is more fun. So make sure you uh, ask your questions. The Q&A box is a little easier for us. If you put something in the chat box, we'll try and grab that too. But if you can focus on the question and answer area, that would be great. All right, let's get started. Um, first, I want to introduce uh, Rick. Rick has, uh, has several years, uh, actually many years of experience in economic and community development in both rural and urban environments. And that's what's exciting about the Valley. Uh, it, it covers both. Additionally, uh, Rick's experience includes procurement, contract development, engineering, and project management, along with sales and marketing. He has a wonderful background for this program. Mr. Carrera has been with the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council for three years and looks forward to working with all of you, the area stakeholders and resource partners to improve the quality of the region's life and economy. And PACE can play a, a, a major role in that. But before we get into this um, property, uh, property Assessed Clean Energy Program, um, Rick is going to tell you about the economic development programs within the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. And these are available to all the businesses and nonprofits in, uh, again, Cameron County, Hidalgo County, and Willacy County. Rick, welcome. We're so glad you're here and we appreciate your support and hard work on this program. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Charlene, for the wonderful introduction. And good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here with us today. Um, you'll find that the PACE program is a very, very worthwhile program and provides a lot of incentive, perhaps, that a lot of people are, will be looking for, um, not just during pandemic, but on non-pandemic times. And, you know, all of us are looking at, you know, the uh, current situation, and I do believe at some point we'll be coming out of this. So I, I mentioned that because I want everybody to understand or know that the Lower Oregon Valley Development Council, specifically us in the Community Economic Development Department, are here to help facilitate and move forward the recovery from the pandemic, uh, among other things that we normally do in terms of economic development, which I'll cover briefly here on this slide. The, uh, our Community Development Department uh, has very, a lot of different programs to it, and a lot of them are designed to improve quality of life here in the area. Some of the uh, community development fund, uh, community development activities include the uh, administration or management or providing assistance with CDBG funds provided through Texas Department of Agriculture. Um, our solid waste program is funded by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Uh, the, the COG is the uh, state delegated agency for the area to uh, produce some of those solid waste activities. And we're actually currently working on our solid waste management plan for the next uh, several years. Uh, in addition to solid waste, we have our water, water quality plan, which includes watershed protection plans. And of course, we run several advisory committees that deal with water quality and, and, and similar issues. So, and one of those, which is the Regional Water Resource Advisory Committee, which meets periodically. Um, I mentioned a few minutes ago about the pandemic. Obviously, it is a, a disaster. Um, it has changed the perhaps the verbiage or the uh, discussion when it comes to disaster, because previous to the pandemic, when we talked about disasters, it all worked centered around flooding, hurricanes, uh, those weather-related kind of things. Uh, 
um, which are still considered disasters, but in addition to the disaster, we now have to consider the pandemic as a disaster because it has been an impact economically to a lot of the area, uh, not just us, everybody worldwide. Um, that being said, we do have some resources provided to us by the Economic Development Administration, EDA, as it's listed there in the slide, to uh, provide some, some mitigation and some resiliency uh, assistance to the area. And I bring this up because you will be hearing from myself and a couple of members of the community economic development staff, uh, probably within the next few months, um, to touch base with a lot of economic development folks and a lot of the Chamber of Commerce folks to start getting some, uh, some information and some, uh, some activity underway in terms of providing some resiliency from either the disasters we've encountered through weather-related weather disasters over the past couple of years or, of course, the pandemic. Um, one of, you know, a, a project that we've undertaken here at the Lower Oregon Valley Development Council over the past couple of years has been an app and a website called Explore RGV. And I know some of you are thinking like, well, what does this have to do with PACE and weatherization and you know, those kinds of things? And it's not directly related, but it is related to our ability to come back from the pandemic because as some of y'all may be aware, and those of y'all on the call or on the, on the meeting this morning that are specifically geared towards tourism, know that tourism has taken a big, kind of a big hit here. So we're looking to really leverage Explore RGV, the app and the website to help all the communities kind of bounce back, at least get their tourism underway. Uh, that being said, I do encourage everybody to go look at the Explore RGV app. Just Google Explore RGV, the app and the link for the website will come up. Uh, like us, follow us on Facebook. I understand we're going to be having some giveaways here in the next few weeks for some of those people who like uh, the app. Um, so I just wanted to bring that out there. Yes, it is a shameless plug for the Explore RGV app and website, but nevertheless, it is, it's going to be an important piece in, in, the, uh, in the resiliency and the recovery here. Um, last but not least, the, uh, we do offer some grant management and grant and technical assistance for EDA funded programs. If you are a community, community in the area, your small community, large community, which, whichever it may be, and you are looking to capitalize on some EDA funded programs, by all means, give us a call. We can walk you through a lot of the process. We even offer some grant administration services as well. Um, you can find us, of course, at our website there. That's the last bullet, lrgbdc.org. And I'll, I opened it with pandemic. I'll close it out with pandemic because I know we, we will be continually, continually loading up some resources and links onto our website uh, surrounding COVID-19. And of course, some of the other aspects here that I've talked about in terms of resiliency and, and recovery. Um, that being said, one of the other programs that we do work with here is the PACE program. I didn't include it as a bullet here because frankly, it's the presentation for the day. And with that, I will turn it back over to Charlene and Charlene can inform you guys on the PACE program. Thanks, Rick. My name is Charlene Heidinger. I'm the president of the Texas PACE Authority. I love this program. In 2012, I was hired to get PACE legislation passed in Texas. We built an enormous coalition of business, local government, lender, contractor, engineer, groups uh, and companies, and we got the legislation passed. Then we spent a year designing the best program for all of Texas. And what this means is that uh, the pace in a box model, what you'll hear a little bit about today, is a program designed to be very protective of local governments. It doesn't take any tax money. It doesn't require uh, local governments to spend money on staff. Uh, but it includes a number of protections to make sure that these projects are successful. It's also one of the most free market programs in the country. The power is in the hands of the property owners. You can you work with um, the contractors and lenders of your choice uh, and put together projects in the way that you're used to doing business. And that was really important to our community in Texas. So I wanna share that with you, but I also wanna tell you that the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council was the first council of governments to say, we wanna bring this to our, uh, to our members in our constituency. And so Cameron, Hidago, and Willisey were among the first counties to create the program in Texas. And we've always appreciated that leadership. And we look forward to finding ways uh, to bring this program uh, more fruitfully uh, to the Valley. So uh, 
In order to have a successful PACE program, you have to have local governments create the program, and the Valley has that. Property owners need to understand it and want to take advantage of it. There needs to be a lending community ready to loan money for those projects. And then we need contractors, architects, engineers, design build firms ready to go to make uh, to, to help the property owners figure out the best way to take advantage of this program. So let's talk about uh, why this is important. So first, let me just take a minute and say that the PACE program is one where property owners can access private lenders and use this mechanism. And that's really all it is. It's a mechanism involving the local government to help get this done. But what is achieved here is 100% upfront financing for anything that makes business and nonprofit property more energy efficient or more water efficient or creates power on site. Solar is the prime example of that. So we're trying to help businesses overcome the upfront costs of equipment, new roofs, insulation, HVAC, solar, kinds of things that all businesses would like to see but can't afford. And so let's talk about why that's important um, in our commercial and industrial real estate trends. There's a lot of property that's underutilized or was utilized in a way, offices are a prime example, that during COVID and probably after COVID are going to have to shift to a different um, use. Uh, we're seeing old hotels being turned into nursing homes or apartments, and those um, are going to be higher and better uses of, of that property. Um, we're seeing uh, people and governments and businesses more interested in being better uh, environmentalists and stewards of, of the world and their communities, in addition to trying to lower their own operating expenses. Uh, Rick talked a little bit about resiliency. A lot of the energy and water saving measures also make buildings more resilient to storms, uh, stronger roofs, uh, creating power on site, particularly combined heat and power. Um, sorry, I don't want to get too technical here, but there are ways that you can create power on site and then manage to continue to use that power during a storm, even if you lose uh, power from the grid. But the other thing is a lot of energy efficiency measures, particularly involving HVAC uh, and lighting, can also um, kill the COVID uh, virus uh, along with other viruses and bacteria. So health great health in, in uh, improvements can also be funded through PACE. So right now, most businesses don't have the upfront capital to um, deal with deferred maintenance or make their buildings more energy or water efficient. PACE, it's 100% upfront financing using somebody else's money. So you don't have to lay somebody off in order to replace your roof. Um, a lot of folks are saying, I, I can only get short-term financing but my HVAC system, if I buy a new one, it will break even eventually, but uh, it'll be over uh, an eight, 10, 15 year period, but I've got to pay it in five, I got to pay it off in five years. That's going to create a cash flow problem that I cannot live with. And so with PACE, the funding stretches out to the useful life of the equipment. And the idea is if you stretch out the funding long enough, the savings will exceed the cost. Uh, so these are measures that literally pay for themselves. Um, if you don't have funding in the traditional way, uh, because PACE is um, a loan against the land instead of um, the equipment, it's not a personal or a business loan. Uh, landlords can pass this through to the tenants. The tenants will come out ahead because their utility bills will drop. Um, and we want those utility payments to pay the assessments, so um, the tenants will come out ahead. Uh, and if you're not planning to own your building for a long period of time and you're worried about why am I gonna invest in an HVAC system that's not gonna break even for 10 years if I'm gonna only own this building for the next three years. Well, this um, kind of financing, the PACE assessment financing stays with the land 
and it transfers the remaining payments transfer to the new owners. So you don't have to worry about overinvesting in your property anymore. Why do we care? Why did the government create this program? It's because 50, more than 50% of energy is consumed by our commercial sector in our buildings. 75% of US electricity generation um, is used to heat and cool and light and otherwise operate our buildings. Um, it's happening in these commercial buildings. So we've got to find a way to help property owners lower their costs. That's really what this is about. So PACE is long-term, low-cost, 100% financing for energy efficiency, water conservation, and distributed generation projects. That's a fancy word for saying making power on site. Um, solar, wind, uh, uh, and then microgrids, com combined heat and power, CHP. There are a number of new technologies that are especially important for hospitals, industrials, uh, schools, uh, and, and big businesses. Okay, you can only use PACE on commercial property, and that includes nonprofits, industrial property, both uh, manufacturing, agriculture, chemical, uh, and multifamily property. So think about apartments uh, with at least five units. So this is repaid on a, through a special property assessment on the property itself over the useful life of the improvements. So it's authorized by the state. It's been enabled by your counties. This is completely voluntary and open market. The property owners can use whatever whoever lenders that they want to work with. Why PACE? So here's a picture. Right now, um, look at that repayment uh, tall rectangle on the left. I call that the tower of pain. But when you are gonna borrow money, let's say to replace a roof or to re replace your HVAC system, your bank is gonna to wanna to be paid back in five years or less. And there are good reasons for that. They don't know how long you're gonna be in business or how long you're gonna own that property. And they can't come and take the HVAC system if you don't pay. So it's a high risk loan for them and they wanna be paid back in five years you will get significant utility savings from that project, but you don't see them until after you've paid off the loan, that yellow uh, rectangle. So what PACE is doing is really knocking that tower of pain over. So you still have to pay for the HVAC system, but you can do it over a longer period of time with smaller payments. As a result, you can access the utility savings right away and use those utility savings to repay or to repay the HVAC system. So you're going to improve the value of your building without hurting your cash flow. Okay. And as a result, you're going to increase your net operating income. And that's the whole goal because you can use that extra operating income to hire new people, run your business, and do what you want to do without having this drag of constant repairs on equipment where you might not even be able to get parts anymore. Now you get all of that behind you without having to lay somebody off or without having that huge cash flow problem for five years. That's what we're trying to do for everyone here. So what does that look like? I wanna show you this building in Amarillo. And I know Amarillo is about as far away from the valley as you can get in Texas, but these types of buildings are all over Texas, beautiful, historic buildings that are boarded up because developers can't find a way to, to redevelop them and turn them into something beautiful because there's just not enough money out there to do it right. So what happens is these buildings just sit empty and that hurts the downtowns, that hurts all the areas around them. Developers come in and try and they'll get an engineer to put together a beautiful um, program and they either can't afford it and so the building sits empty or they have to cut uh, because it just costs too much, they have to cut out the things that people don't see. So what do they cut? They cut the, um, all the things, all the energy efficiency and water efficient measures. And then that building is gonna cost a lot more to run forever than it should. And everybody's kind of condemned to hire uh, utility bills than should be done. And PACE can help overcome that. So this beautiful old office building is being turned into a Marriott autograph hotel 
already the economic development and the buildings around it have started to happen. That eyesore is gonna be something lovely. And if you look at what they did, so LED lighting, building envelope, windows, doors, new roof, insulation, all those things that make the building more efficient, keeping the cool air in and the hot air out, or uh, you can see the snow here, they're keeping the heat in and the cold out. But uh, they're also using uh, natural gas for, the, for all their water heating, because there'll be uh, you know, a lot of toilets and sinks in a new hotel. So, one of the things I want to point out here is that this also uh, was married with a historic tax credit financing. So we want everybody to get every incentive you can, which is why uh, talking to Rick in the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council Economic Development Office is so important. Make sure you get your utility savings, every other incentive that's out there, facade grants, uh, and in this case, historic tax credit. But look at this, electricity savings 73% natural gas, 79%, water, 40%. These are huge operational savings for, these, for this business. Okay, what's eligible? Boilers, chillers, furnaces, mechanical system updates, uh, HVAC, water, geothermal cooled systems, energy management systems, lighting, LED upgrades, building envelopes, we talked about that. All kinds of things, including renewables and distributed generation systems. People forget about water, but if you're not constantly using water that the local governments have had to run through the wastewater treatment facilities, you're saving them money, but you're also saving yourself a lot of money. So high efficiency water heating systems, water conservation systems, wastewater recovery and reuse systems, all kinds of things that are incredibly relevant to industrial properties as well as commercial properties. High efficiency irrigation equipment, these uh, measures need to be permanently affixed to the property. We want these measures to stay on the property because they're creating the savings to repay for the PACE financing to get them in the first place. And we want to make sure that property owners know they need to maintain this equipment to get the savings over the long period of time. So again, you'll see the valley is nice and uh, blue with the coverage of this uh, PACE program, we've grown quite a bit since uh, the Valley counties joined the program under the uh, Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council leadership. Uh, and with your leadership, we've managed to grow this through the state. So if you own buildings in the Valley and you also own buildings in San Antonio or maybe Corpus Christi or maybe Eagle Pass, and you wanna combine uh, improvements to your buildings, PACE can do that because these programs are the same, they use the same documents. And we had one mall owner close uh, three PACE projects on three malls in two counties with one lender on the same day, creating incredible efficiencies and in savings. So uh, we want you to be able to take advantage of that. So the model program we use um, was we spent a year putting it together to make sure that it would be uh, logical for local governments to create the program, but transparent, uh, protective of, of all the stakeholders, um, and that it would be user-friendly, scalable, sustainable, and most importantly, uniform. So you've got a really a best in class program, which is being copied in other states. So, in the beginning, if you look at the bar chart on the left, you'll see that we closed our first projects in 2016, about $3 million worth. Uh, and the program has grown steadily since then. And even with COVID last year, we were uh, successful in facilitating uh, $32 million in new investment uh, in energy and water saving projects in Texas. And that's despite COVID. So, as we've grown the program and it's started to take off, people are getting experience with it, local banks are getting experience with it, and it has really started to grow. And so our hope is that all of this experience is proving that this model really works and that property owners in the Valley will begin to take advantage of it and feel safe and comfortable in doing so. It really is working. And that's why this presentation is so much fun today because there's a lot of good news here for all of you. So, um, and if you look at the pie chart on the left, you'll see that virtually every kind of uh, uh, commercial, industrial, and um, nonprofit property is taking advantage of this program. It really is working. 
Okay, so this program is available in urban and rural areas and the Valley has a lot of both and you'll see some project examples showing success in both. Uh, it's been used for office, mixed use, nonprofit, hospitality, multifamily, even a parking garage and retail. Uh, and last month we closed our first senior housing uh, multifamily uh, property and for PACE and we're really excited about that. Uh, because when you think about it, anything we can do to lower the cost of these types of property help not only the, the landowner, but the whole community and, and the tenants. So energy efficiency, water conservation, distributed generation, uh, demand reduction, you can use it for resiliency. And we're finding that a lot of the qualified projects also help um, kill the COVID virus. Uh, our smallest project is 68,000, the largest is 24 million. All received 100% financing. Okay, there are resources to help you do this. Uh, Rick is the great uh, first place to start, but your contractor, your PACE lender are gonna be able to help you put these projects together. Um, it's not on you to do all the paperwork uh, and there are a lot of folks, both at the Texas Pace Authority, in my office, in Rick's office, and, and like I said, the lenders who wanna loan you this money are going to know about the program and um, help, with, help with all of this. So, so unfamiliarity with the project shouldn't be a barrier. Don't be afraid of this. Ask, ask lots of questions, and uh, there are lots of people you can ask uh, those questions. Okay, uh, communities across Texas uh, are looking to pace to spur building upgrades, achieve air quality and, and environmental goals, as well as neighborhood redevelopment. Pace can open doors to conversations with new and existing customers that lead to business. So not only are we trying to improve these buildings, but when we do, somebody's got to manufacture that equipment, somebody's got to deliver it, somebody's got to install it, somebody's got to feed those folks and somebody's got to maintain it. So we are trying to create jobs across the whole community, um, within the contracting community, within the architect community, within the engineer community, within the local lender community, uh, and within our businesses and nonprofits. Okay, this doesn't tie up your company's line of credit. It increases your building value, your performance, and comfort. It doesn't have to be paid off to, at sale. It's tied to the land and and it's not a tax, but like taxes, when you sell it, the new owner commits to paying taxes from then on and they commit to pay, repaying the final PACE installments. Uh, it can be paid for over a longer period of time. So we see a lot of 20, 25 year PACE uh, assessment financing terms instead of a five year term. And we design these to be cash flow positive and most of them are cash flow positive on day one. Okay, this was our first office building, typical HVAC, um, system controls and lighting. Now this um, building owner also got $30,000 in utility incentives. The PACE assessment was 1.3 million. They lowered their annual utility savings by 38%. Okay, this looks a little complicated, but I want you to um, look across uh, the cash flow impact in year one. If the owners had paid for that system even after their savings, they would have owed more than a million dollars after year one. If they borrowed money from a conventional bank, they still would have owed 342,000 on top of um, the PACE savings. So that's cash out of pocket. But if you look at the third column with PACE, the savings of 200,000, uh, that's the electric bill savings, were greater than the PACE payment, which is paid over 20 years, they brought $86,000 of cash into this building and got new HVAC and lighting. So if you look at the bottom row, you'll see that the net present value of that investment if they'd funded it themselves was 818,000 over um, 20 years. Uh, over 20 years, it was positive for a bank loan, but over 10 years, it was negative. And if you look at the PACE numbers, they're significantly better over 10 years uh, as an investment compared to not doing anything. But in this 
building, they couldn't keep their tenants because the air conditioning system was so unreliable. And so they were able to be cash flow positive, make the tenants happy, and um, make a great investment for that company. So if you look at it from a cash flow perspective on that building, blue is PACE. They were cash flow positive from day one. Uh, so right here, this is the blue. They were cash flow positive from day one. Had they borrowed the money or had they just paid for it out of pocket and very few businesses have the ability to do that, they would have not broken even until um, 11 and a half years. If they borrowed money from a bank, traditionally uh, that adds the interest cost and they wouldn't have broken uh, even until about year 13. So this is an ROI immediate, uh, right? A series of one year ROIs that are all cash positive versus an ROI of uh, 11 and a half years or uh, 13 years. So um, big difference in cash flow. And that's really what we're trying to do uh, to help our businesses. Okay, how does it work? The property owner has all the power. The property owner finds the contractor, selects the project, identifies their PACE lender, and applies to the program. The Texas PACE Authority uh, is, is responsible for signing a contract, uh, making sure that the contract between the owner and the local government is um, solid, that all of the engineering has been done properly and the underwriting has been done. So we know the property owner can pay the installments and we know that, the, that we've done everything we can using standard engineering uh, protocols to make sure that the savings are really gonna be there. An independent third party engineer is required in the statute to review what the contractor is telling the owners. Okay, so then the lender and the local government sign a contract. The capital provider, the lender provides the money, the contractors complete the project, and then the owner uh, sends payments uh, to the lender. That's a high level uh, way that this works, but here's where the trust comes in. There's a firewall between what the property owner and, and decides in the private sector and what the local government does. So the review of these projects um, is transparent and clear and honest and, and objective to make sure that, that the owner is going to achieve uh, the savings that are expect, expected in the project and that the local government is going to see success with these projects too. Okay, in Texas, uh, if there's a mortgage on the property, you have to get the written uh, consent of the mortgagee. And we are working in the Valley and across Texas for our local banks to see that they can also be PACE lenders. And we've had two projects where that has happened, but these are, this is a non-exclusive list of lenders who are ready to be PACE lenders today. Um, most of them throughout the state. And we hope to add uh, local banks to this list. And if you've got a good relationship with your local bank, we will be happy to work with you and with them so that they can be PACE lenders too. So these lenders are ready to go today but this is a non-exclusive list and we hope to grow it uh, over, over time. Okay. Oh, I've already talked about the diversity uh, of the project. Um, and so this is kind of a reminder slide, urban and rural, office, mixed use, nonprofit, hospitality, energy efficiency, water conservation uh, projects, project size, 68,000 to 24,000, and they all received 100% financing. This is the biggest project in Texas. Uh, it was 24 million. It was an empty uh, 1910 mercantile warehouse. It's now two hotels, high-end loft apartments, and first floor retail. And you'll see all the different things that they used for PACE. 40% uh, energy reduction uh, and 700,000 gallons of water saved. These are every year. These are annual savings along with pulling 35 metric tons of CO2 out of the air, avoided in this project. But this is what I wanna show you. PACE is being used when these buildings are purchased. And what happens is people will put a capital stack together, they'll get sources of funding from lots of different groups. One of the most expensive loans is called a mezzanine loan. And in this case, they were gonna pay 15% interest, whoops, 
sorry, 15% interest on this loan, um, they learned about PACE and they learned about all the things that qualified for PACE. They pulled them out of this capital stack, got rid of this mezzanine loan and put them into, they pulled them out of uh, all these other sources and put them into a PACE loan at 6.13%. The rates have come down since then. But this is in addition to all those annual savings, they dropped their weighted average cost of capital, their interest rate to buy that building by almost 2%. Enormous savings for developers and property owners looking to finance the purchase of a building um, and, and the costs and, and underwrite the costs of fixing it up at the same time. Okay, this is a, a rural project in Elgin, Texas. It's a feed store. And what's exciting about this, uh, there are two things that are important about this. One is that in addition to PACE financing, they received um, a USDA REAP grant for about $30,000 and then Encore utilities incentives uh, for about the same amount of money. So this $200,000 uh, project was reduced uh, by $62,000 with other incentives. The owner uh, put a little of his own money into this one, and uh, as, a, as a result, uh, he's getting 26% uh, savings on his electric bill. Uh, this is a solar roof project. But the other exciting thing about this project is it was funded by a local bank. So a community bank in Elgin, Frontier State Bank, became not only the mortgage holder, but also the PACE lender. And we are very excited about the example that this project sets. Okay, Continental Gin Company at one point was the largest uh, cotton gin uh, in the in the state. This is in the um, uh, this is in Dallas, and it's being turned into offices and mixed use. Uh, there's maybe some restaurants at the bottom, but look at the savings. Just the valley is full of these beautiful old buildings that can be repurposed and brought back to life and, and wisely with great energy and water uh, improvements. So this is a historic theater in the Cowtown uh, part of Fort Worth. Um, and we're very excited to see a nonprofit uh, bring a historical building back to life. So again, uh, the Cotton Gin and the new ISIS Theater both uh, got historic tax credits as well as using PACE financing. Same with the Kimpton Hotel. This is a former XTO oil and gas headquarters in Fort Worth, historic office building. This one's on the National Register and um, it is being brought back to life as a hotel with um, some pretty significant uh, energy and water savings. This is a great project. I'm very excited about this one. It may not be the prettiest one, but this is an old motor court hotel, 317 apartments, all with exterior doors. Uh, this is being turned into studio apartments in East Austin. Uh, this multifamily housing is uh, desperately needed in this area. And uh, look at the savings, 700,000 kilowatts of power every year. Okay, old office building, 1980s office building in uh, uh, North Austin. Uh, again, uh, $291,000 PACE uh, investment, uh, roof, HVAC, thermostats, and solar. All right, and family elder care. I love this one. This older building is purchased by a nonprofit that helps the elderly stay in their homes. And so the idea here is that we can um, uh, help these nonprofits reduce their costs to run their operations so that they can put money into the core business. So the annual savings resulting from this project are significant to the nonprofit, but their electric bill is about $5 a month after they added solar and a cool roof, a roof that reflects the heat. The El Paso Hotel, this was Hilton's first high rise um, and it is uh, being brought back to life. It's been uh, empty for 25 years. When it goes back into business, it's creating 161 permanent hotel jobs in downtown El Paso. 
this was the first time we realized that paste could also create permanent jobs. This is an old Hager sewing plant that used to make men's suits in Corsicana. It had been empty for 10 years. A company that makes cheerleading and sports uniforms in Missouri called Navarro County and said, if you'll create a PACE program, we'll buy that building. They'd been doing site visits to move most of their business to Texas. And there are now 60 permanent manufacturing jobs, sewing jobs in, um, in Corsicana that weren't there before. And a building that was basically doing nothing on the tax rolls has been brought back to life. Uh, and that was done with HVAC and lighting. All right, so PACE is a win-win-win scenario. We've got property owners can lower their utility bills, make their buildings more competitive, uh, repurpose their buildings for, for greater use uh, and value, uh, and gain energy independence, uh, and, their, and really enjoy uh, increased property values when they go to sell the property. Contractors get a new source of business. Instead of constantly trying to repair equipment, they now can serve property owners that have a common sense way to pay for actually replacing and, and, and ultimately saving money with technology advancements and better equipment. Lenders can make new loans. Um, these are very stable, safe uh, loans. They're fully collateralized and then uh, the security is better. Uh, and there's a tax uh, assessment type lien uh, the same position as a tax lien in terms of making sure they get paid uh, and there's improved asset value. So the collateral is better. Communities, increased economic development and jobs, improved building infrastructure, more filling building stack and plants, but also tremendous environmental benefits uh, for everybody. This has an impact on clean air, uh, more read readily available water, et cetera. The state, um, has grid reliability, reduced peak demand, and all uh, measures of improvements. And then finally, um, I want you to know that if you really want to know how to put a project together, uh, there is a webinar on Thursday for contractors, architects, engineers, and property managers who might be interested in taking advantage of this. You can learn how at a service provider training workshop on Thursday at 10. Um, we've put the registration uh, information here. And then there are also additional resources. We'll make these slides available to everyone, as well as the recording of this webinar. Uh, but we hope you'll follow up and continue to learn about PACE at the webinar on Thursday. And with that, I'm going to um, uh, stop sharing my screen. And Rick and I would be pleased uh, to answer uh, your questions. So we have two. Um, uh, Michael, Alex asked, we mentioned some PACE projects in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, can, can we tell you about those? Actually, we have not done one yet. And we look forward to changing that in 2021. There are several projects that have um, come very close to being finalized. Um, but for whatever reason, they did not happen yet. Uh, and, and when you look at the, the opportunities for hotels, uh, restaurants, businesses, multifamily, uh, industrials, there's unlimited opportunity in the Valley. But the program takes some getting used to. Uh, we tell people it takes three presentations to really understand it. And our goal today is to, is to continue that discussion and to grow um, interest in the program. Uh, one of the challenges is that, um, uh, frankly, people can't use a program they don't know about. So uh, we do as much education and outreach as we can, and we welcome an opportunity. We can do private training for, uh, for businesses. Uh, so if you have an interest uh, in having your team learn more about this program, we would love to do that. If you're part of an organization, um, building owners and managers or uh, contractors, Rotary Club, chambers, um, if you're looking for speakers this year or you would otherwise like to put together a, a training or a, an outreach or more of a dialogue to do more Q&A, uh, we are really looking for opportunities to get in front of businesses 
to talk about this program. So uh, please keep us in mind. Uh, we very, very much want to want to reach out to the community and make sure that people know this is there because too often something will break and people need to fix it immediately. And there are ways that we can help, um, but we need to start those dialogues right away in order for this program to be available. So uh, Michael, Alex also asked, we mentioned wastewater um, recovery, uh, stormwater recovery, bioswales. So the it's a great question. The statute requires that the measures um, result in energy savings or water savings or creating power on site. So uh, the issue with stormwater recovery, if there's a way it can be tied to actually reducing the use of water on the property, then yes, it will qualify. But right now the statute is limited to reducing water use and reducing uh, power use or creating power on site. So if there's a way to, that the engineering will show that, that these uh, measures uh, reduce water use, then, uh, then the statute will allow it. Okay, uh, our next question, we are the US, okay, so there's a US manufacturing company, it's owned 80% by foreigners. Uh, there is no ownership requirement. Um, in fact, uh, if, if you'll follow up uh, with, with me, uh, I can send you or show you on our website under the resources drop-down menu, you can see all the case studies for the pictures I showed today, but there's a case study for the 1225 North Loop uh, property in uh, Houston, that office building, that glass office building we talked about uh, that needed new HVAC and lighting, that is foreign owned. And the owners were not interested in putting any money into that building. They were interested in getting the rents out of it. It was a cash cow and they did not want to use their own money to improve it. The property manager took the PACE program to those foreign owners and said, here's a way that we can fix this building because we're starting to lose tenants uh, using PACE and it won't cost you a dime. And, the, and so the owners, even though they were not in the United States, they were not even in Texas, said, yes, let's do it. And they love that net operating income increase. Uh, and they love the fact that tenants are uh, gonna be more willing to stay because now the air conditioning actually works. So ownership is important, but it's, uh, it's uh, not essential. Okay, so the pie chart uh, showed educational projects. I assume these are private schools, that's correct. The, the PACE program has to be used on private property. There is another program in the comptroller's office, in the State Energy Conservation Office. It's a play on words. It's called Lone Star, L-O-A-N-S-T-A-R. And so if you uh, Google Texas SECO Lone Star, L-O-A-N-S-T-A-R, you will learn about a very similar revolving fund program that's been enormously successful for government buildings, everything from, government, from public schools to courthouses uh, to maintenance facilities to jails uh, for uh, using a similar program to help low, lower local governments reduce their operating costs. What other questions do we have? Uh, Charlene, this is Dub. While you were presenting, <clears throat> one question did come in, which I answered, and that the question was, uh, uh, if you look in the answered section, I have a four-unit apartment building that's being rented on, for short-term rentals on South Padre Island. Is that considered commercial, or does it otherwise qualify for PACE? And uh, the answer provided is a four-unit building would not be eligible that under Texas PACE law, residential real property with five or more dwelling units is eligible under the commercial definition. So that one came in as well. Okay, that, uh, that is a great question. And one of, the, um, one of the things that I would think that we would need to look at um, is the idea that this is short-term rental. So Dub, we would need to see how the property is considered. Um, it's almost, is it more like a hotel? in which case um, it might be eligible. So that's a fact pattern that I would like to know more about. 
but you're right. If it's considered multifamily property, it would not qualify. If it's, um, if, if for some reason it, it's like a, more like a hotel uh, that, that has suites um, kind of a thing, then we, or uh, like, like the hotels that are all over the country for business people who stay for a couple weeks, um, that, that's a fact question I'd like to know more about. It may be, Charlene, this is Rick, I'm guessing, and that's key word here, it may be a con, like a small four unit condominium that they may rent for three, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of thing, or maybe a week at a time or something like that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's probably, fairly, fairly, sorry, go ahead. It's fairly common on the South Padre for some property owners to have those smaller units. Yeah, a clarification did come in as a vacation rental, uh, so that's 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 the nature of the property. Okay, it's very possible that we might be able to do it. I think we'd need some legal feedback because we would need to make sure that we're within the four corners of the statute. But the question would be, you know, is it taxed as multifamily property or commercial property? Uh, the the we just, I think we'd need a little more help, but if we could do it, we would love to do it. And one of the prime examples of using PACE is with hotels. And we're seeing a lot of it. And right now these hotels are so underutilized. This is a great time to come in and do this contract type work that for most places, unless they're brand new, really needs to be done. Uh, HVAC systems, the water. So. In a lot of hotels that haven't updated, uh, they're, every time a toilet's flushed, they're spending money on five gallons of water. But if you walk into Home Depot, you can't buy a toilet today that flushes more than 1.3 gallons of water. So even just replacing the toilets would have huge uh, operating income improvement impacts. So you know, if you need a new roof or you need to add controls to your HVAC system. It's time to look at the insulation so you're not spending all that money um, air conditioning the pool area outside. Uh, this is the time to do it. Uh, and South Padre is full of prime PACE opportunities. And we would love to serve this community. So Texas PACE Authority is a nonprofit. We're not doing this to make money. We created this organization to get this program off the ground and help everybody else in the community profit. So we hope, um, I'd love to know more about that project. And even though I can't say a firm yes, and I don't want to say a firm no, I'd like to learn more about it and see how it would be uh, analyzed uh, today. Charlene, we've got about four minutes left and there's two open questions, if you can see those. Okay, uh, so Charles, can this um, <clears throat> be used to build a new building? Maybe. So the statute says you cannot use PACE on undeveloped lots or lots undergoing development. So our um, community feedback, we've gotten lots of pro bono assistance from lawyers. You can do uh, new construction as an addition or as a new building if there's already a building there. And you can um, uh, use PACE for a teardown and a rebuild or on property where there was a structure before. So the idea is what's a developed lot? Uh, as long as the lot was developed at some point, uh, it is eligible for PACE. What we cannot do is green fields. And um, there's, there's uh, been a lot of activity trying to figure out where that line is. And, and I hope you will follow up with us because we'd very much uh, like to, to help you determine if the property was previously developed? Because if it was, the answer is yes. Uh, and Andreas, how will the interest rate be determined uh, for the program? That is between the property owner and the lender. And we and the local governments have nothing to do with that. So the fact that there's a large list of lenders ready to go today, but that it's not exclusive and um, maybe your bank, if it's interested in becoming a PACE lender, can probably beat the interest rates that are out there. That's a possibility. Um, so what we are telling property owners is help us uh, help you understand the program and then go out and bid your project and see who can give you 
the, the best terms and the best rate, because it's also all those closing expenses. It's not just what the rate is. And the other thing to remember is that with PACE, uh, don't judge PACE just on the interest rates. The whole idea behind PACE is getting the lenders to where they're willing to loan over 15, 20, 25 years so that your savings exceed the cost. That is the key to the program, is that it's cash flow positive nature. That's more important than what the interest rate is, although the interest rates and all the other terms are obviously incredibly important. But if you're just measuring interest rates, you're missing the point and we need, we need to do another training session because I didn't communicate uh, adequately enough yet the value of this program. So uh, I don't see any other questions. And although you don't see his picture, I'd like to introduce everybody to Dub Taylor, who's helping us with the webinar today. Dub is our chief operating officer. He served for more than 20 years as the director of the State Energy Conservation Office. Um, and uh, with his real estate background before that, Dub is a great resource on the technical side of this. And so please reach out to us at the Texas Pace Authority, reach out to Rick at the Lower Rio Grande Valley Development Council. We look forward to serving you with this um, great program. And again, to learn more on the technical sides of, every, of all of this, please uh, sign up and join us on Thursday for the training workshop uh, that really gets into the details of how to put together a Pace project that will pay for itself. And with that, Rick, um, anything you want to add uh, in terms of uh, the presentation today and the value? Uh, no, great. I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Um, this is probably the first of many uh, informational sessions we'll have. Like Charlene, I agree with you. It may take a few of these before uh, the program is really well understood. I think everybody here has a really good grasp of it already. But you know, as, as these things go, people have more questions as time goes on. And, uh, they can certainly reach out to us and of course reach out, reach out to y'all and, and uh, I enjoy, I encourage everybody to join us on Thursday as well. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thank you all. Have a great day.